after we will discuss about the sliding filament theory of muscle contraction so many theories are proposed for the muscle contraction one of them the most accepted one is sliding filament theory according to sliding filament theory there are basically four steps involved for the contraction of muscle what are those steps first is muscle activation second is muscle contraction third is recharging and fourth is relaxation so first we will study about the muscle activation so for the movement of muscles firstly a signal from nervous system is commanded to the nerve cells which are motor neurons which conduct this message to a uh, muscle cells as at a specific site of muscle and that specific site of muscles at which the message from nervous system is conducted is known as neuromuscular junction so that point where a message from nervous system is transferred to the site of the muscle is known as neuromuscular junction where a specific electrochemical signal is received that is known as mus uh, neuro uh, uh, neuromuscular junction and that nerve which is associated for the conduction of this message is known as motor neuron and the overall this unit which is involved for the conduction of this message this one overall constituent muscles plus this motor neurons form a motor unit so motor nerve stimulates a uh, action potential to pass down a neuron to a neuromuscular junction this stimulates the sarcoplasmic reticulum sarcoplasmic reticulum what is that endoplasmic reticulum of mus uh, muscles which contains stored calcium ions it will stimulate the sarcoplasmic reticulum to release calcium ions into the muscle cells and when calcium ions are released then the muscles will contract how we will study in next slide so there is interconversion of different types of signal first uh, let Uh, electric signal which is transferred from nervous system to the neuromuscular junctions then this is transferred to chemical signals in the form of the stimulation of endoplasmic or sarcoplasmic reticulum after the release of this uh, 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 calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum it will result in the contraction of that muscles so there will be the interconversion of chemical signal into mechanical signal so electrochemical signal Uh, convert into mechanical signal which is basically contraction of muscle then the second step of sliding filament model is muscle contraction calcium floods into muscle cell binding with troponin allowing actin and myosin to bind so we have study that there is a fine complex of troponin and tropomyosin in the case of actin where both form a complex which avoid the attachment of actin filament with myosin when calcium release this calcium ions because this troponin have a site or attachment site or active site for the attachment of calcium ions so until or unless when calcium is not available troponin will attached with tropomyosin but when calcium ion released into the muscle cells through the activation or stimulations of uh, sarco reticulum then the calcium ions will attach with the troponin and it will result in the change of the structure of troponin due to the change of troponin the complex will broken down and my actin filament or actin now will be in the free state to attach with the myosin so there will be a fine uh, cross bridges formation between myosin and actin uh, filament the actin and myosin cross bridges bind and contract using atp as energy what is atp adenosine triphosphate which is used as a fuel by the cell then the next is recharging what is recharging atp is resynthesized allowing actin and myosin to maintain their strong binding site so when atp is broken down into a AMP adenosine monophosphate monophosphate or adenosine diphosphate plus one inorganic phosphate then the cell or muscular cell consume this ATP for the contraction and when this 
uh, adenosine uh, diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate is not available or we can say that atp is not here for the contraction of muscles then the muscle will be in a relaxed state fourth and the last step of the uh, sliding filament model which is relaxation relaxation occur when stimulation of the nerve stops so when a uh, nervous system is stopped to send a signal from the nervous system to nerves which act as a motor neurons to neuromuscular junction then calcium is then pumped back into sarcoplasmic reticulum and no calcium are not available to attach with the troponin and when calcium are not here for the attachment to the troponin then troponin will not be available in free state or troponin will not change its structure so when troponin structure is not changed it will remain intact to the actin filament and until or unless this troponin or tropomyosin complex attached to actin it will not provide a site for the attachment of myosin so in this case we can say that muscle is in a relaxed state actin and myosin return to their unbound state causing the muscles to relax alternatively relaxation will also occur when atp is no longer available as i have discussed in a third step then when atp is not available to um release a uh, two compound which are adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate then the muscles are not here to contract while muscles are in a relaxed state so these are four basic steps involving the sliding filament model muscle activation muscle contraction recharging and relaxation after that we will discuss about the process or mechanism which is involved in the contraction of muscle what are this uh, what are that specific mechanism which is involved in the contraction of muscles we will study in this section first of all muscle contraction occur when muscles receives a impulse from nerve cells in the form of action potential as we have discussed in the sliding filament model steps that are basic steps involve or uh, this is known as a activation of muscle which is through the signal which is sent by the nervous system to the neuromuscular junction after the rece uh, reception of this muscle by a receptor on a muscular cells or muscle cells then the muscle get recharged and endoplasmic reticulum or sarcoplasmic uh, get uh, uh, charged or stimulated and it will alternatively release a number of calcium ions for the attachment to troponin when a muscle contract actin is pulled along myosin towards the center of sarcomere so basically functional unit of sarcomere contract relax contract and relax for the contraction and relaxation of muscle so sarcomere functional unit which involve lighter as well as darker band or we can say it contain thick or thin filament in the form of actin and myosin filaments which completely overlap on each other for the contraction of muscle mechanism of contraction is the binding of myosin to actin forming cross bridges that generate filament movement cross bridges is that specific site where actin filament attached to myosin so myosin is thicker as compared to actin and myosin protein contain head like structure myosin i am talking about thick filament so myosin contain a head like structure which form the binding site with actin filament so this basically forming cross bridges so cross bridges is the formation of a fine uh, bonding between myosin as well as actin here you can see the diagram of the contraction of muscles in the form of sarcomere so sarcomere is from one z line to another z line so this central basic functional unit is known as sarcomere so the contraction of thick filament over thin filament and overlapping of these two filaments is basically for the contraction of muscles so here you can see that thin filament thin filaments are those filaments or we can say that which are formed of a specific protein which is actin thick filament are those filament which are made up of myosin so the overlapping of thin thick filament form and the uh, contraction or narrowing down of this m line which is present between this a band 
is known as uh, we have study about that a band is that band which contains secant thin filament we have discussed that in i i band or isotropic band where z line contain it contain only actin filament so in uh, a band it contain myosin as well as actin uh, both uh, uh, filaments so what is m line here is a new term m line m line is basically for a uh, metabolic enzymes metabolic enzymes are those enzymes which are here for the release of those specific secretion for the activation of enzymes so in enzymes there is a metabolic enzymes or that specific site which contain metabolic enzymes we call it as a m line so it is a central line which transect a band and when muscles uh, contract and thick and thin filament overlap this m line get shorter and shorter and then uh, we are studying about skeletal muscle contraction so we have studied until uh, this step that when a muscle contract the distance between two z line is reduced however here the point to be noted that the individual length of myofibril is not getting shorter but the uh, z line is getting shorter so myofilaments or myo uh, 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 myofibrils are not getting myofibrils which run parallel are not getting shorter but these lines which we called as z lines i line a uh, m line these are uh, uh, changing within the contraction of a muscle so z line get shorter and shorter until or unless m line become narrowed down or a point reach when this uh, transaction or this uh, lines get disappear so myofibril itself is not getting shorter but the z line is here which is getting shorter and which is involved in the contraction of muscle which is basically overlapping of thick and thin filament so the h zone h zone we have uh, we studied in the uh, previous slide that specific uh, slide i can show you in this uh, diagram uh, so here is a h zone which is a central line which cut this a, a band or which transect a a band a band is what which contains myosin as well as actin so both type of filaments when available in a band that band is known as a band the central line which transect this a band is known as h zone Uh, so we, here we are saying that h zone the central regions of a zone contains only thick filament myosin as in shorter during contraction so it is the mid part of um, a band a band after that the uh, muscles uh, the h zone become smaller and smaller due to increasing overlapping of actin and myosin filament and muscles shortens thus when the muscle is fully contracted h zone is no longer visible so there is a, a, a different point that h zone get vanished when the muscles contract fully acha ji ek point jo hai wo main yahan bataun aap logo ko ke jab aapke paas electric impulse aa rahi hai us waqt jab nervous system se ek signal aa raha hai kisi bhi neuromuscular junction par it get recharged a number of uh, uh, number of myofibrils but not all muscles so those number of myofibrils which get recharged by this electrochemical signal or impulse that specific part or that specific myofibril containing part of muscle will contract as compared to whole muscles when all uh, myofibrils in that specific muscles thoroughly uh, receive the signal and thoroughly contract then that all muscles will contract so one uh, new, um, uh, electrochemical signal recharged a number how many uh, myofibrils contain in those specific uh, numbers there may be 100 to 1000 of myofibrils get recharged by a electrochemical or uh, this um, motor neuron so uh, when a muscle is contracted h zone is no longer visible so what are further steps include in skeletal muscle contraction i band isotropic band which uh, which we call as it contain only actin uh, filament or thin filament so i band contains only thin filaments and also shorter the a band doesn't shorter 
we called a band contained myosin as well as actin filaments it doesn't which contains h line as well so a band doesn't shorter it remains the same length but a band of different sarcomeres that is from z line to z line they contract or relax or they are involved in the overlapping of thicker and th thinner filament so thin filaments are pulled by the thick filaments towards the center of sarcomere and until or unless the z line or z disc approach the thick filament so here you can see in this uh, diagram that when this z line contract then the thick filament or thin filament they overlap on each other so by the overlapping of these thick and thin filament or by the contraction muscles contract so h line become disappear due to the contraction of this uh, 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 sarcomere structure the i uh, band uh, we called it isotropic band or actin filament it will also get shorter by the contraction of sarcomere after that um, the zone of overlap in which thin filament and thick filament occupy the same area increases as the thin filaments move inward so i band when contract i band which contain only actin filament when it contract then the um, uh, overlapping of uh, thick filament or thin filament also increases so here is a point to be noted that when the actin and myosin filament themselves don't change their length but instead slide pass each other but here is a fine overlapping of two filaments that is thicker and thinner filaments so this is overall structure of muscles contraction in which we have study about the basic part of the muscle which is involved in the contraction of muscle which is a sarcomere or functional unit and sarcomere we have uh, we said that it is a from one z line to another z line it is a specific part which is involved in the muscle contraction